to me, a thought leader and an influencer is someone who's not just talking about how to do things, but they're actually doing things and then teaching others how to do it. So for me, entrepreneurs are wonderful potential thought leaders because they've already figured out how to solve a problem and then they're sharing that solution with others. But if you're an executive or you're a social entrepreneur, whatever it might be, it's figuring out how to codify, develop a how-to guide or a framework, a methodology, something that you can then turn over as your intellectual property and spread it into the world. So it's codifying what you know, sharing those best practices with others. That to me is real thought leaders and those are the people that should have the influence because they have the big ideas. Thought leadership is the very best career insurance around. What's going to happen in your future career is that something is going to change. There's going to be a merger, there's going to be an acquisition, your party is going to be out of power, or your boss is going to leave, whatever it might be that you thought was the next path, that's not going to be open to you at some point. Thought leadership actually allows others to find you and to provide you the next opportunity. It allows you to land on your feet and actually allows you to know the right people to connect with so that you can make that next opportunity happen. It's no longer about waiting around and hoping that something's happening. Being a thought leader actually makes things come to you and makes the opportunities appear. That to me is the career insurance we all need. What I would start with, for example, is literally hosting a brown bag lunch at your company. What is it you know more about than anybody else? Could you host a small training for a, just a small team of people? Is there some sort of a community event where your knowledge and information that you might know that somebody else might not know might be of value? Is there some sort of a small group of people that you can bring together and start testing your ideas? What people don't realize is that speakers don't suddenly come up with their brilliant ideas the first day they get on a giant stage. They test them over and over again with lots of, with lots of people. So you want to play the small venues. The second thing is you want to actually figure out what is it you actually know that other people don't know. Now that can be very difficult when you're early in your career, but we've all had lessons learned somewhere in college, somewhere in a book we read, somewhere in a boss gave us, and being able to internalize that and then share with folks, how did that occur in your life? Okay, great, you learned to go do X, Y, Z at a book, but then when do you actually implement that? What's the situation? What was that experience like? Can you share that with other people to a more generalizable lesson? That's when you actually start having something to say. People tend to overlook the actual experience that they've had and not see those are things that can actually help the next group of people. There are always some, there is always someone younger than you who's, or someone who's never done what you've done before that you can help along and that gives you the confidence to keep doing it for bigger and bigger audiences. Mm -hmm.